Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan, and in this video, we are going to answer a question from one of my students. The question is, how can we associate a service to different implementations so that we can decide that, for example, in a controller, we will use one implementation, and in another controller, we are going to use another implementation. So basically, we want to have a service with an interface, and we want to have two associated classes to that service. How can we do that? Well, let's see that in this video. All right, so we are here in Visual Studio, and first what I'm going to do is that I will give you a tour over the sample application that we're going to use in this video. So we have here an interface which represents the service to which we want to associate two classes. So this is iFileSaver, and as its name implies, we're going to use it to save files. In our case, we have two implementations of this interface, file saver local, which just save the file into the www root directory of our XP.NET Core application, and also file saver Azure, which save a file to Azure. Now, the problem is that we have two controllers. We have the movies controller and the people controller. And because of a requirement of our client, here in movies controller, we want to save posters of movies, but we want to save those posters in the www directory. Meanwhile, in people controller, we're going to receive photos of our actors and we want to save those photos in Azure. So we have a service, iFile Saver, but we want to use one implementation in one class and another implementation in another class. So how can we do that? Well, let me first talk to you about factories. In the past, I made a tutorial about factories in which we were able to do the following. We had our iFile Saver service, and what we wanted to do in that video was that we wanted to use one implementation if we were in development and another implementation if we were in production. So for that, we use a factory. That allowed me to say, if we are in development, we're going to use file saver local so that we can save our files in the www root directory. Otherwise, if we were in production, we were going to use the file saver Azure implementation of our iFile saver service. But that is not what we want to do in this video. In this video, I want to say from here, for example, from Mobis controller, that I want to use the file saver local implementation. And in people controller, I want to use the file saver Azure implementation. So how can we do that? A simple way of doing this is the following. Let me come here and I will say builder services. We're in the program class, of course, where we can configure our services. And I'm going to say add a scope and I will use iFile Saver, File Saver Azure. And then after that, I can do the following. I can say builder services, add a scope, add scope i file saver file saver local so what am i doing here what i'm doing here is that i am associating these two implementations to this service this means that if i go to the movies controller instead of getting a single i file saver i can say i enumerable because i have several implementations of i file saver so i can say here files saver and then in here, I can use some code in order to get the specific implementation that I want to use. One way of doing this, and this is not the way that I advise you to use, is to say files saver of type, and then say something like file saver local first. This will work, but there is a problem with this. And the problem is that I am hard coding the file saver local class here, which defeats the purpose of using dependency injection and the dependency inversion principle of the solid principles. Because the idea is that we should use an interface so that we have flexibility so that in the future, if we want to change this implementation, we only have to do that in one place and then that change is going to propagate to our whole application. So this is a no-no, so let me delete this from here. So another simple way, because you can use a design pattern to solve this, but I don't think we need to make things so complicated. A simple solution that I want to teach you is to use a simple enum. So let me come here to the Solution Explorer. I want to create a new enum. 
So I'll call it file saver type. It will be an enum. And in here I will say Azure and local. These are the two types of file servers that I have. If I have another one like AWS, I can do that. Or Google, I can do that. There is no problem with that. But in our case, we only have two implementations. So I will just put two options for our enum. So now let me come to the interface. And in here, I will add a property, which will be of type file saver type file saver type and I will remove the set because I only want to be able to read that. Then I will go to the file saver local and I will implement the interface which will add this code and from here I can say file saver type and this is the local version and then here I can copy this, go to Azure paste this here and just say Azure here. So this is basically like an ID of the implementations of our service. And with that, we can do the following. With that, we can go to Movies Controller and we can say file saver equal to file saver first. And I can say file saver type equal to, and here I can choose which one I want to use. In the case of Movies Controller, I want to use the local implementation. And then in People Controller, I want to save this in Azure. I want to save the files in Azure. So I will say, or first I should do this. I should say IEnumerable and then Files Saver and then File Saver equal to Files Saver dot first and then I want to say here that I want to use the Azure, Azure implementation. And that's actually it. With this, we're good to go. We have made it so we can choose which implementation of the service we want to use. And not only that, but I am hiding behind this ID the concrete class that we're using. Here, I don't know that we're using the file server Azure class. So in the future, I can change this. I can do another implementation and just put this ID over there and there will be no problem and that change will propagate to our whole application. Again, there are many ways to implement this. This is only one, I think one of the most simple ones that we can use, but it is one that works. So let me test this. Let's see that in the www root directory, we don't have anything. And if we go to Azure storage, you are going to see that we don't have anything here. Let me go to blob containers, people, you can see that this is empty. So what I will do is that I will press Control F5 to run our application and we're going to see that indeed in different classes we're going to use different implementations of my iFile Saver service. So let's come here, let's come here, let's test movies first, try it out, choose file. Let me look for a poster like Luca, execute. And let's see that we have a 200 OK. So let's go back here. Now let's go to that WW root. And you can see that we have indeed the Luca poster here. Now let me go to here because now I want to use the people controller. Now let me choose an actor. So let me choose Captain America. Open, execute, and 200 again. And let's come here. Let's refresh. And here we should have Captain America. So let me copy this, paste it here. And you can see that we have his photo here. So as you can see, we were able to, by using this functionality of being able to associate several implementations to a service, we were able to indicate which implementation we wanted to use depending on the class that we were using. In Movies Controller, we use the local implementation and in People Controller, we use the Azure implementation. If you want to learn more about .NET, SP.NET Core, and other technologies, please check out my Udemy courses today. There is a link to all of my courses in the description of this video. Thank you.